before 1910, there weren't any standards for medical education in the United States. Someone could go to school, let's say for a couple years, and then call themselves whatever they like. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about why it takes so long to become a doctor or a surgeon. What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Webb, an orthopedic spine surgery fellow. So, why does it take so many years to become a doctor or to become a surgeon? Right now, to become a surgeon in the US, it takes anywhere between 13 to 17 plus years to become a surgeon, which is ridiculous. But you have to understand why this was set in place and why this number of years is required to become a surgeon. So since 1910, there have been many changes that have come about. Times have changed. There have been duty hour restrictions. There have been different rules and regulations about the training process to become a doctor. A lot of people start realizing that one person can't know everything and it was impossible to learn and to be a doctor for all different specialties. Then people started realizing that the different specialties in medicine can become unique training programs by themselves. And this birthed the different specialties in medicine, such as anesthesia, dermatology, internal medicine, pathology, surgery, transplant medicine, nephrology, cardiology, and all the other specialties that are out there. Specialty boards came into place to oversee doctor qualities and also to certify doctors in certain specialties. This certification by board establishes licensure and is a culmination of many years of training for a lot of physicians. You begin the process of learning how to be a doctor or how to be a surgeon in medical school. Your first two years are actually in the classroom where you're learning the foundation and the basics of becoming a doctor. Then you advance this training when you go into your third and fourth years of clinical training when you rotate in the hospital on your clinical rotations. Your PGY one year or your intern year is your first year after medical school. This is the year where essentially you're getting your feet wet and you're learning how to become a doctor. This is when you're learning how to work up a patient or see a patient in the ER, let's say for chest pain, and how to appropriately manage that patient. And if you diagnose this patient with a certain condition, how to treat that patient. Your PGY two year and as well as your PGY three year means that you have a little bit more responsibility and in some specialties, your PGY3 year is actually your chief year. Some specialties have only three years of training as a resident, some of the internal medicine programs, pediatric programs, as well as some emergency medicine programs. Your PGY4 year, as well as your PGY5 year, are usually years where you have increased responsibility, as well as increased autonomy. As a surgeon, this is a very good time during your training because once you are a PGY5 or a PGY6, you're expected to act and function in a manner that is similar to a staff surgeon. Personally, I don't think you learn how to be a doctor until you are a resident, until you are learning how to write orders, until you're learning how to examine patients on your own, how to work up patients, how to order and interpret lab and imaging modalities. And by the time that you finish your training, training programs have a set amount of cases, surgical cases that you must complete a minimum number before you graduate. In my surgical residency program in orthopedic surgery, there was a set number of various procedures that we had to complete. And as orthopedic surgeons, we work on lots of different parts of the body. We work on the knees, we work on the hips, we work on the hand, the spine, the neck. And within each of these body parts, there are different surgeries that can address certain pathologies. So as a orthopedic surgery resident, there are certain procedures that we had to complete. 
for knee replacements, this was around 35 to let's say 40 knee replacements and hip replacements, let's say 25 to 30 hip replacements. There was a minimum number of carpal tunnel surgery, which means we make an incision on the palm here to decompress the median nerve. There was a minimum number of spine surgeries, a minimum number of trauma cases. By the time that you have completed your five years of surgery training, most people have completed or exceeded the minimum number of cases in order to graduate. And these are just set arbitrary numbers. Most surgeons, when they get out into practice, will say that after doing a certain procedure, they feel comfortable after doing that certain procedure a certain number of times. Say for instance, after your surgical training, you're graduated, you're a staff surgeon, and you're out in private practice doing knee replacements. Most surgeons or some surgeons would say that they're comfortable doing the knee replacement after let's say 50 of them. Even though you graduate with a minimum number of knee replacements that are required for you to do while you're in your training, you may not feel 100% comfortable doing the knee replacements until you have done a lot more. And by the time that you are a PGY4 or a PGY5, most residents feel comfortable graduating and going out on their own to perform surgery. There are some medical schools that have even cut down medical school to three years instead of four years. There are certain surgical programs that are going to a more competent base of graduating their residents. Say for instance, you have two residents, one is a PGY3 and one is a PGY5. Well, if the PGY3 is competent in doing the surgeries that are required of an orthopedic surgeon, well, should that third year resident be allowed to graduate and start practicing medicine versus the PGY5 who may take an additional two more years as a PGY7 in order to be competent in performing surgery. Everyone starts off at a different level when they're coming into the training program at a surgical institution and everyone leaves the residency program with a different skill set just because everyone doesn't complete the same exact number of cases. In my training program, I completed about 2,000 surgeries as a resident, while some of my co-chief residents completed around 2,400 or 2,500 cases. So it depends on how busy the staff surgeon was there in their rotation. When I came onto that rotation a couple months later, Maybe that staff surgeon was not as busy, so that may affect some of the surgical numbers that were inputted during our training. So training in medicine is long because it's incremental. Each year, you're given increased amounts of responsibility, and there's a lot of information to know in order to take care of patients in a safe and efficient manner. So yes, 14 years to become a surgeon, four years of college, four years of medical school, and six years of surgery training for an orthopedic spine surgeon. It's a lot of information to know, and even after my final year of training this year, there are gonna be things that I just don't know, surgeries that I'm just not comfortable with, and a lot of more learning to do. Medicine is a lifelong learning process, and even after being out of all of my training 20 years from now, I will still be learning and refining my surgical skills. There's an old saying that good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. I think it's important to see and learn as much as you can before you are let free on your own to go out into the world and take care of patients. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.